The following program is made possible by the friends and partners of Creation Today. Did you know satanic rituals are creeping into our lives without us even realizing it? Could you be innocently allowing your children to watch movies and television, maybe even play games that are at the core demonic? Welcome to the Creation Today Show where we bring together interviews with experts and solid Bible teaching. Your host, Eric Hovind, affirms the ultimate authority of God's Word, the truth of creation, and why it matters to you. Let's be honest, guys. Movies and games have desensitized and even normalized witchcraft in the Western world. Now, speaking personally... <laughs> Witchcraft is a subject about which I just assume stay ignorant on. However, its prevalence is becoming a bigger and bigger issue in the world. Now, I'll tell you why I want to stay away from it. <laughs> the Bible, okay? Not only is it is it something that war it is the Bible, does the Bible give us warnings about witchcraft, but it also promises us that God is the one that we should be trusting in. You think of Old Testament passages like in, in Deuteronomy, where there are verses that are warnings to the children of Israel. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritualist, or one who calls up the dead. I think he kind of covered all of it there. In the New Testament, we read about in Galatians chapter 5, the works of the flesh. And in Galatians chapter 5 in the New Testament, uh, idolatry and witchcraft is, is written right alongside practices that are forbidden. Such uh, and, and and other things such as lying and in, in Revelation uh, chapter twenty one it it has sorcerers and idolaters in the list with murderers and whoremongers and liars saying they shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. First Corinthians ten is another passage um, where it's it's warnings and it says the things which the Gentiles sacrifice they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not want you to have you fellowship with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. So how has the forbidden practice of witchcraft influenced the Western world? Uh, this is sure to be an interesting conversation, okay? My guest today is an author and a speaker for Answers in Genesis. He's one of the stars of the Genesis Paradise Lost movie. His articles, his videos, and his books have influenced literally millions and millions of people around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mr. Bodie Hodge. Bodie, <laughs> welcome to the Creation Today Show, bud. Hey, it's great to be back on the show. It's been a while, so. It, it has been a little while, and this conversation scares me, but it is needed. It is really needed in today's culture. Hey, for those of you, by the way, joining me on uh, our podcast, uh, thanks for the great feedback in the comments. And uh, for those of you joining me on television, uh, send a note to your local television station saying thank you to them for airing the Creation Today show. Uh, by the way, I've discovered that if you include a little gift, a little donation, they they love that. Um, hey, also, if you're joining us on Facebook or on YouTube, uh, thank you guys uh, for joining us as well. We're just a community of people that is discipling the world one conversation at a time. If you ever want to join the community, come on over to the creationtoday.org uh, and partner with us. Um, Bodie, like I said, I'm I'm a little bit scared of this conversation. Uh, do I need to be nervous about, about a conversation about witchcraft and demonology and Wicca and all the other things that are out there? Hey, you know what? When it comes down to it, uh, we stand with God. And uh, there's no greater force than God. So, you know, really, when it comes down to it, everyone else should be afraid of what God has to say. It's his word that's going to judge him in the end. Uh, but, you know, from our human perspective, you know, sometimes it does seem kind of scary. Hey, we're we're dealing with, uh, you know, like Satanism and the occult. And we're dealing with witchcraft. And uh, sometimes we get this idea of, oh, boy, this is tough. This is scary. How, how do we deal with this sort of thing? 
Um, so yeah, from a human perspective, yeah, it, it does seem a little fearful, but we need to remember God's on the throne and God's in control. And uh, that gives us this joy, gives us this peace um, that sometimes a lot of people uh, don't realize how amazing that really is. But uh, yeah, this is a big subject, especially, uh, you know, it's around Halloween, you know, every year this pops up. Uh, but, you know, you're, when it comes to our culture and witchcraft and things like that, it's not just around Halloween anymore. That's uh, we right. see it year round. Um, you know, if you just look back at a little bit of the history, uh, you know, you go back 100, 150 years ago, I mean, witchcraft was, I mean, it, that was a that was bad. That was seen as terrible. People avoided it like the plague. Uh, you know, you might have had a handful of closet uh, of people involved in it, but it was nowhere near mainstream like what we have today. So if you think, well, what kind of things have happened in that time? Well, if you look back, you know, one of the early TV shows that kind of, I think, made made light of witchcraft was Bewitched. I don't know if yes. you remember Bewitched. I, I do. Oh, it's, it's I watched it. Uh, you know, who didn't want to have a, you know, the, the the power to be able to have your meal just like that, a nice meal. Sitting <laughs> in front of, uh, you know, so people were kind of fascinated by that. But notice how they did it in a fun way. It was That's enjoyable. It. They 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 actually took the messaging of witchcraft and through games and movies made it innocent. They portrayed it and and funny. So I, that's I mean, I that's what I was as I thought of this show, I was going, how many of us have been influenced by witchcraft? And and kind of like either knowingly or unknowingly been exposed to a lot of things about witchcraft. Right. Well, you know, I was a child when I first watched Bewitched. You know, I'd sit there and I'd just giggle. You know, Darren had me in stitches all the time. You know, <laughs> I didn't think much about it. But then, you know, as a child, I wasn't very discerning either. Um, but then fast forward, you know, I mean, we, we've we got all sorts of movies and TV shows. And, you know, you might think of Disney's uh, uh, Wizards of Waverly Place, you know, another fun, comical, enjoyable kind of a show, an entertaining kind of a thing. And then you have big, huge productions like the Harry Potter movie series. When it came out, it was gigantic. And, uh, you know, I mean, you could almost immerse yourself into it. And I think a lot of people in the Western world have been immersed in not just the Western world. I would say some of those have actually influenced people all over the world. Yeah. And it, it almost normalized. And people got this exceptional interest like, oh, this is interesting. Maybe I should look at this. Let me go get some books. Let me read more about this. And little they know they were already on a trail uh, heading away from God. I'm I'm, all, I'm still wondering here at 44 years old if the Wicked Queen in Snow White and the Seven Dwarves from 1937 was actually a wicked witch. And, uh, and then you got the Sword in the Stone with the Mad Madame Mims. And you got... The other ones that I've seen as a kid. The Wizard so, of Oz. <laughs> Wizard of yeah. Oz, yes, the Wicked yeah. Witch of the West. Yeah. By the way, that's why I had you on here today. I need you to tell everybody to stop watching all movies. The floor is yours. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, there, there are some good ones. You know, uh, uh, Genesis Paradise Lost. You know, oh, that, I mean, that's crazy. true. That's a good movie. That's, okay, I got I to take that back. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So the key is being discerning. and. Okay. You know, like you and I, you know, we have, we have a, a decent understanding of the Bible. We can watch some of these shows and go, okay, here's what's wrong. Here's what's wrong. Here's what they borrowed from a Christian worldview. Here's, you know, we we sometimes would watch it different from, say, just stepping back, letting the entertainment happen. But most of the time when people watch something or, or they, they're doing a game, they're doing it for entertainment purposes. But at the same time, they're being discipled. They're being taught certain beliefs, and sometimes they don't realize it. So the key is getting that discerning factor on. And the way to be discerning is to know what your Bible says. Oh, that's you know, so true. You're not going to know what's right and wrong if you don't know what's right. And well, take us on Bible. a journey then, because that, you know, when you think about it, it really is that simple. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm trying to look back in my life and think of these movies I watched and go, okay, was I tempted by it? I don't feel like I was tempted by it. I looked at it as good versus evil. That's kind of the way I right. saw it. Right. And a lot of those are set up that way. And, you know, it's interesting when you look at, at, at certain religions like witchcraft, um, just so people know, I mean, we're, we're, we're talking witchcraft. Uh, we're talking about Wicca is probably the more proper term. Uh, in fact, when it comes to witchcraft, if I can kind of define it just a little bit, uh, there's a classic old fashioned form. Uh, it would have involved, um, you know, things like, uh, uh, you know, magic use, sorcery, stuff like that in old folklore and old ancient cultures. Modern witchcraft is a little bit different. It is more of an organized religion, but at the same time, it's disorganized because there's so many forms of it. Um, you know, if, if you're a person involved in it, chances are what you believe is different from a, another group in another area. So there's a lot of forms of witchcraft, but in a big picture sense, it's neo-paganism. That means new 
paganism. Uh, it's just a form of paganism. There's a lot of forms of paganism out there, and witchcraft is one of those many, or Wicca is one of those many. Uh, just so people know, I throw that name Wicca out there. Uh, Wicca and witchcraft, they have a lot of crossover, but they are a little bit different in certain things. But by and large, they have a lot of similarities uh, that cross over with them. But it's paganism. So what is paganism? It's it's any pantheistic worldview. It's any polytheistic worldview. Uh, think of Greek mythology or Roman mythology or Egyptian mythology or even Baal worship or the Druids, you know, with their Celtic religions. All of that's paganism. But at the same time, if you worship the universe or you say the universe is all that is or ever was or ever will be, that's paganism also. And wow. a lot of the evolutionists that hold to that, like Carl Sagan, I basically quoted Carl Sagan. Yes. Uh, uh, for those of you who are younger, Carl Sagan uh, used to do this series called Cosmos. Neil deGrasse Tyson redid it, but he was famous for that. The universe is all it is or ever was or ever will be. That's a pagan statement. You see, there's multiple forms of paganism. Witchcraft is one of those. And sometimes you see witchcraft mix with those. They'll mix with the Greek gods or they'll mix with the Druid gods and so forth. And so they'll sometimes mix with uh, different forms of that. Uh, one thing about witchcraft that's kind of unique compared to most, uh, just about any other religion that I've seen, although you can have a multitude of gods, their supreme god or their ultimate god is a goddess. It is a mm -hmm. female goddess. And, you know, I, I was involved in a World Religions and Cult book series, Eric, you, you're you familiar with that. I got and, it. I was going to talk about that. I'm like, I got the whole thing. <laughs> you and Roger, I cannot. I, wow. To cover all the religions and cults you did, it's three books. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, we had over 60 world religions and cults in that. And there's a whole chapter in there on Wicca and witchcraft written by somebody who used to be a, a, a Wiccan coven leader. And I got saved out of all that. So, I mean, they knew a lot of the fine-tuned aspects of it. But, you know, when you think about, in out of all those religions, that's the one that has a supreme female uh, deity. Now, I've seen a lot of Christians, and sadly, I've even seen politicians and others say, oh, well, God's a female they realize that's actually witch, witchcraft right there. It's Wicca. Uh, it's infiltrated their views, whether they realize it or not. If you call God a female, the ultimate God a female, that's witchcraft. So you wow. can see even that influence has, has dove into certain churches. I had somebody text me last night who was studying in the library and said a student came up and invited him to church. And he said, oh, tell me about your church. And it was a church. And he sent, I should pull up the picture. He sent me a picture and it was all about we are learning about mother God and how mothers are going to, you know, what you really want is a mother. And so surely when you get to eternity, you're going to miss your mom and you need a mother God, mm -hmm. not father God. And I was like, I, hearing you say this, yeah. and, and I was just reading in chapter two in the, in the chapter on witchcraft yeah. in, in that book, many Wiccans and witches hold that the earth is the goddess and consider earth to be the source of life, calling the earth mother of all life. There it right. is. It's in yep. there. Yeah, when we hear terms like Mother Earth or Father Time, you know, those are actually pagan terms. You can see how these all get interchanged, get put in there. So, you know, here, here's another interesting thing about uh, witchcraft. You know, the Bible mentions witchcraft, but the term witchcraft itself uh, is actually a modern term. Uh, a lot of our translations, you know, going back for 400 years in English, you know, you'll see the word witch, you know, the sometimes you'll, you'll see the witch of indoor or witchcraft being used, you know, back in the books of Moses. But really, that's a modern term. Uh, what 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 the Hebrew is behind that is like sorcerer or necromancer, which is somebody who calls upon uh, the dead. So it uses those terms, but witchcraft in modern terms basically the same thing. So that's why it translates so well into that. So there are ancient forms. There's modern forms. And like I said, it can be anything. Most of them do believe in a, a mother goddess. Sometimes they'll have a multitude of gods in there. They're lesser than the mother goddess. There are a few cases of witches and witchcraft uh, or Wiccan uh, uh, views where they are atheistic, actually. And that actually surprises people as well. So it's, it's kind of unique. But uh, most of them have mother goddesses, the supreme. You know, I often think back when I think about something like this, think back to my college days at Jackson Hole Bible College and Don Landis, who you know very well, and he had this entire teaching on there's only two worldviews. There's two kingdoms, God, not God, 
God, Satan. There's only two worldviews. And since Satan can't create like God can create, all he can do is pervert. So he's perverted worship. He's perverted sacrifice. He's perverted music. He's perverted sex. He's perverted relationships. All you have is the God and the not God, the God's kingdom and Satan's yeah. kingdom. And it In seems fact, that's to how like- we start that. That's how we start that book series. We had 60 world religions and cults, but we open it with the fact there's only two religions, gods exactly. and not gods. And if exactly. it doesn't come from God, one way or another it comes through the mind of man. Even if it is satanic or demonic, it's still presented to other people through the mind of a man. And a lot of times we call that humanism in its broadest sense. So yeah, paganism, witchcraft, they're all they're all part and parcel of that. So this makes me when you say there's like so many varieties of this, I, I don't I'm asking this as a question because of my ignorance. All, it reminds me of Satan in the Garden of Eden telling Eve, you shall be as gods. And we know that's the same lie that he's told everybody. And he tries to get lots of people with that. And it's almost like every person can be their own god. And there you got all, so you got a whole bunch of religions. And Satan is the one that's kind of promoting this. And is that far out to say that? Or is that kind of consistent with scripture? That, that, that's probably right on the mark. Uh, you know, when you think of humanism, they, they, if I can just give you an idea, let, let's say you start with God and his word. Whenever you reject God and his word, by, by what authority can you do that? Well, you do it by man's authority. So you elevate your own thoughts or other people's thoughts to supersede God and his word. That's humanism in its broadest sense. And anytime a human does that, they're basically saying they're their own God. And so that's why you have all these different views. You have a, a multitude of Eastern religions, a multitude of pagan religions, a multitude of counterfeits of Christianity. Like you said, uh, you know, Satan counterfeits. And so people counterfeit in their sinful state. And so we see just a multitude of worldviews out there, world religions, uh, and even variations even within those world religions, all because people see themselves as the ultimate authority. So can can movies and games can they actually be gateways or are they are they pretty innocent or that can they be gateways that introduce ideas to to kids and to, even to adults? You know that's a really good question. I, you know I think uh, in one sense it really can help lead people away because it's introducing certain ideas that people then go oh okay maybe I'll take this whether they're realizing that they're thinking about that or not. Some games are, are, you know, I mean, we can probably pull out a handful of games here that are just absolutely terrible. And they're influencing <laughs> people in a horrible way. But then there's some games that actually influence people in a good way. Uh, so once again, you know, it's, it's a discernment issue. Um, you know, maybe we can cast a dice here and, and see if it, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I you think know, of like, like, okay, the new Doctor yeah. Strange in the multiverse, there's the two oh, main my. characters are chased by witches and demons. I right. mean, that's that's the storyline. And I go, okay, is it just, mm -hmm. hey, use discernment as you watch it? Is it is it an innocent or is yeah. it, no, this stuff is real. It really happens. You, you should be aware yeah. of it. And you should tell your kids there really are people who worship Satan and worship demons. Mm -hmm. And there really are those that worship God. This is right. teaching tools. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, you know, the Bible says to uh, always be training your children, always be training your grandchildren, even, and, and your husbands and wives. Be training, getting into the Bible, comparing this stuff to Scripture. The Bible says test everything and hold on to the good. You know, when it comes to a game, when it comes to a movie, it's always good to use those as teaching points to train your kids. You know, I used to do a lot of work with youth groups, and, you know, a lot of the kids, you know, they were, a lot of them were very secular kids, and they would come to the church, and this was their only uh, experience at all with any form of Christianity. And they'd go out and watch movies all the time. I said, hey, guys, I want you to do two things when you go to these movies. Um, first off, I want you to, to, to point out things that are wrong, that the Bible would go against. And then I said, here's the other thing I want you to do. Point out where they're borrowing from the Bible, mm. you know. Hey, the main character, his name was Paul. Well, where did he get that name? You know, I mean, they're actually borrowing that from the Bible. Sometimes you see somebody wearing a cross or somebody wants to do something good. They want to sacrifice themselves to, to help someone else. They're actually borrowing from Christian principles. So I've encouraged people, hey, spot the bad, spot the good. And that teaches them a small level of discernment. I even do that with my own kids. And, uh, you know, one of the things my kids have had uh, at the school that they're at, uh, which is associated here at Answers in Genesis, uh, they have a logic class where they're actually taught to, to spot logic. Uh, you know, when, when people are doing logical fallacies, for example, sometimes they're all over it. They learn the names of them. Hey, that's a straw man fallacy. That's begging the question. Or if they really want to get, get picky, you know, oh, that's an affirming the consequent fallacy. I saw how that was set up. You know, and it's neat because I'll see my kids watching something and they'll go, 
oh, that's this fallacy. That's wrong. You know, takes the emotion out of it. They can spot the fallacy. It's that easy. So, you know, when it comes down to it, I, I, I think sometimes these things can be good for teaching tools, but at the same time, we have to be discerning. But sometimes the littler kids, they don't know how to think on some of those things. So I think sometimes we have to maybe shield the younger kids uh, while we're training them. I'll tell you another avenue where this gets out there and some realize it, some don't. I uh, And I don't know if you've seen this documentary series or not, but I watched the documentary series Hell's Bells and uh, all on rock and roll music and all on and they go through and they show the actual performers saying, I worship Satan. I only do this because of Satan. Uh, the satanic symbols that they give from the from the stage, the, the, they open it up and show that, look, they are trying to use this to bring about um, um, a knowledge of, of witchcraft. Of, of, are they trying to disciple? Yes, they're being disciples. Yeah. <laughs> There's a band called Disciple and I'm trying to think of. Which one that is? I think there's a I good one. I think that's a, a Christian one. in there, disciple. <laughs> I was thinking there were two of them, one good, one bad. Maybe there's only yeah. the one that's the good one. Uh, Maybe the that's one the one Jesus. Okay. Was, uh, <laughs> was a Christian one. I'm not there a music guy. That's my problem. I don't I don't right, really right. listen to much music. But no, you're right. There are. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot of you know bands that came out in the 60s and 70s, you know, um, you know, they you know, one of the famous ones was Ronnie James Dio. You know, he was professing. Uh, you know, you know, holding to demonic worship and things like that. You know, and he's upfront about some of those types of things. Uh, there's been people who's been saved out of some of that stuff as well, which kind of surprises people. Uh, you know, the drummer for Iron Maiden, for example, ended up getting saved, and and uh, you know, he's outspoken about some of that. Uh, is he a strong, solid uh, Christian after that? No, he's still a baby Christian in my opinion, and uh, you know, he's still got a long ways to go. But you know, I want to encourage people to come out and uh, follow the Lord Jesus Christ, and no matter what it is, so. Amen to that. Yeah. Okay, so I I, I want to give you some time to just kind of educate us on what other things we need to be aware of. It's is it almost hard because there's so because there's so many, or is it like no? Uh, let's let's talk about you can break it down to Ouija boards and something else and something else, or is it like how do you how does your you write a lot, so you're always a logical thinker. How do you break this down to try to help educate people? Just remember the, okay, let, let me put it this way. Some people think, oh, they have to know all these different variations. They need to know everything there is to know about Satanism or witchcraft or Wicca uh, before they can even talk to somebody. No, you don't have to worry about that. Just remember the big picture. God, not God. If they're not, if they're over in this category, you automatically know where they're at. You automatically know that their authority is not God in his word, and it should be. So that's where you need to talk about, hey, we got two different worldviews. We have two different authorities. That's where you need to talk. You don't need to go over here and talk about practices of a coven. Um, you know, you don't need to know about those. Things. Yeah, it might help you to know a little bit about their religion, but you don't have to. That's the point. Because the key has always been an authority issue. Either God's the authority or man is. And if man's the authority, well, then anything goes. Anything. What? And they sometimes don't realize that. And sometimes they don't re realize that they're not really living their life in accordance with their religion. And I could say this of Islam, I could say it of Hinduism, I could say it of atheism, I could say it of witchcraft. They're not really living their life that way. And, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, think of witchcraft. You know, why why would a, a witch or a wizard or anyone wear clothes? Where does their God reveal to them that they need to be wearing clothes? Well, they don't really have a revelation from their God to tell them that they should be wearing clothes. You know, all their, all their worldview is all arbitrary anyway. Why, why are you wearing clothes? Well, that actually comes from a biblical worldview, and they're borrowing it, whether they realize it or not. So sometimes what I found, it's good to ask questions. You know, hey, you, this is your religion? Well, let's talk about your religion. A lot of times they're more than happy to talk about their religion, but I want to go to the foundation of it. Mm. Talk about their worldview. Why do you wear clothes? Do you really think there's such thing as right and wrong? You know, where does your God say that? Well, in witchcraft, they don't have a revelation like the Bible, a revealed word of their God. So they they try to come up with what they think their God or goddesses uh, and so forth are trying to teach. So they don't have an absolute basis like we do. So we can point that out and say, wow, so you guys are just arbitrary. You don't really have a reason to believe, which is why there's so many of them. And, you know, they might want to turn around and say, well, you Christians, you guys have a lot of variations, too. Well, yeah, that's true. But 
we do have an absolute authority. What it is is some people don't always know everything about what the Bible's teaching. And so sometimes that's why we have little variations and so forth. But it's totally different from theirs. Well, they don't even have a revealed word from their God. So it's an authority issue. Always keep bringing it back to an authority issue. And you'd be surprised how powerful that really is. That is a great way to think about that. I mean, it is an authority issue. So as you're pointing out things that are wrong, as you watch movies or see things where they're stealing from God, go back to the authority issue. Okay, so I also want people to know it's real. I mean, the the scriptures talk very clearly about Saul who raised or uh, um, uh, yeah yeah Saul who raised up Samuel to talk to him that. Do you discount the reality or is it like, no, Eric, you're, this is correct. It is real. This stuff still happens today. They're, they really are tapping into a satanic and demonic power that they think is going to give them, you know, love, riches, power, something. They just don't know the conclusion of where they're headed. It, it's it's real, right? Yeah, in that sense, uh, yeah, there are. And let me put it this way. God's the absolute power. God created mankind, but he also created Satan. Uh, there are also demons. You know, these are those who have fallen away from God as well, and they have a certain amount of power. The Bible doesn't reveal to us what all power they have and how their limitations are. But uh, when they're fallen away from God, they're not using it for a good purpose. So, you know, when people in witchcraft or, or whatnot are trying to tap into false gods and so forth, they're trying to tap into this type of power. Now, the Bible does talk about the witch of indoor, you know, or the familiar spirit uh, of Endor that, that Saul called upon. And of course, Samuel comes back to life. Now, was it by the power of the witch? No, it's because God sent Samuel back to give Saul one last message. This is it, buddy. I've had enough of that. Um, you know, so we sometimes, you know, we want to give credit to the witch for this. But if you look in that passage carefully, that witch was a little surprised. She was expecting <laughs> something like that. And that goes to show you the power of God over this. But yeah, there are people, if you think of uh, you know, when Moses was trying to pull the, the Israelites out of Egypt, you know, they had all that strife with, with Pharaoh. But what did Pharaoh do? Well, he called upon his uh, uh, sorcerers and so forth to try to mimic what, what Moses was doing uh, by the power of God. And so they were sitting there trying to do these counterfeit miracles and so forth. Um, yeah, how much power of that is demonic and satanic? Th those are great questions. You know, some of it might have just been some trickery uh, yeah, because those that. were wise and clever and stuff. But uh, at the same time, uh, there is some of that. And I think that's one of the reasons that some people, we go back to the very beginning here, why some people are a little scared of it. Satan is real, for example. Demons are real. Um, you know, there are people out there trying to practice this sort of thing. But once again, we need to step back and remember, these guys have no power next to God. None. Wow. Um, I it, it makes me want to jump into, okay, today, when you think of the tarot card readers or the, I, mean, I, I just remember looking in, I remember watching the Three Stooges as they made, you know, they had the magic crystal ball. And I'm like, okay, I know we kind of make light of that. Um, I, I'm curious what you think. I, I don't know. Like, do we just make fun of it, but there are people that do it for real, or is it is it like, what are your thoughts? Right, well, you know, th when it comes to the Three Stooges, you just can't go wrong, right? <laughs> I love the Three Stooges. <laughs> what could happen? You get poked in the eye or something? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I mean, clever humor, very, very brilliant humor in that sort of sense. But, but you're right, there are people who look at that, you know, in a comedic, fun kind of a way, but then there's others who really do take it to, to a very serious level. So, yeah, again, we just have to be discerning. And those are the types of issues. Christians uh, in particular, um, hello, you shouldn't be involved in, in that kind of stuff. You know, we should stay away from that sort of thing. But we also have to recognize we're in a culture where people are doing that sort of thing. So um, what we need to do is, you know, be preaching the gospel the whole time. Once again, Damn. take it back to an authority issue. But here's something else, too. You know, look at movies like um, the Narnia series. Oh, hold or, that, hold that, hold that thought. I gotta let I gotta let Facebook and YouTube go right now, and I do want to talk about that because I go there are some good movies that actually expose some of this stuff. Hey, Facebook and YouTube, I'm so glad you guys joined me next week. I'm having a conversation with Dr. Danny Faulkner, who is right down the office from I don't know which way from Bodie, right over there from Bodie. He's over there. 
We want to talk about, we want to answer this question. Did the Big Bang ever happen? Uh, new discoveries from the James, James Webb Telescope. And I just want to ask him some questions about what we're finding with this new telescope, which is a pretty amazing engineering feat in itself. And then the images, if you haven't seen them, there's some stunning images that they're getting back from this. So I want to have that conversation with him. Uh, and if you want to, you can join the rest of this conversation. Come on over to creationtoday.org and join uh, Bodie and I for the rest of this conversation. But uh, if that's all you have time for, if you don't come over to Creation Today, uh, God bless you. We look forward to seeing you guys next week uh, as we continue discipling the world one person at a time. Okay, Bodie, I was going to ask you about these like good series that actually go into uh, have you know, Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe. Thank you for joining us for this engaging conversation. To view this and many more conversations in their entirety, we invite you to partner with us at creationtoday.org slash partner.